welcome back. This is part five in a little series I'm doing about the whack-a-mole game. And the whack-a-mole game or problem is basically something that most leaders do or many leaders do where they're trying to run an operation and in my case you have kind of a product uh, that you need to keep competitive and you have a service function that needs to keep customers happy and there'll inevitably be problems. And so you spend time fixing product problems and you ignore service and then that gets fixed up, the service gets out of hand, and then you swoop over here and focus on that, and the product gets out of hand, and you know you keep jumping around the problems in your organization, and it's like playing the, the arcade game Whack-A-Mole. So, uh, so we're talking through how to model this. We're on our last, uh, last step in the process. Basically, we have spent the last five videos on the left, the product results, how spending more time, uh, how a gap to your goals, uh, drives you to spend more time um, on the product, which drives more of an improvement and improves kind of your product situation. So kind of a regular balancing loop. You have the exact same loop over on the service side. So service results will erode. You're missing your goal by a lot. You swoop over, spend more time on it. That helps it improve, and, um, and it's a balancing loop. Again, it tries to fix itself. It's when we hook these two loops together that you can see many... Uh, uh, many problems come up. So I'll show you how to hook these loops together. Basically, um, what, what's, uh, what's going to happen is service is going to suffer. So if you, if, you know, problem over here is saying spend 80% 80 80 of your time here, and over here it says spend 80% of my time here, you only have 20% left to give. So the way I modeled it is product is the priority for this leader, and service gets the short end of the, end of the stick. There are other ways to model it, but we'll do that model. So the way we do it, you have the regular results here. You'll have a service gap to goal. Okay? And that will drive the percent of management attention that, that you'd like to spend on service. So I'll just call that um, indicated percent management time. So this is what you should do. This is kind of what's indicated by the formulas, really. But basically what happens is you have an indicated time that drives your real management time you spend on it. And you have the time that you're spending on product as your other factor. And these two in combination, the time you're spending on the product might deprive you of time you can spend on service. Plus the indicated time. What is the what is your gap to your goal wanting you to spend? And those both drive the percent of time you spend on service. So that's how the two loops connect right here. And uh, what I'll do now, this video will be a lot of Excel. So we'll jump into Excel. Actually, not too much. We'll jump into Excel. We'll finish off the model. And you can see the whack-a-mole game in, uh, in progress. And then come back to the board and talk about lessons learned. OK? OK, great. All right, now we are going to add the whole service half of this. Uh, of this uh, model. Let me move these things down. And essentially, I'm just going to copy the product stuff down. And it's not a whole lot more complicated than that. I'll just gonna change the word product to service. Uh, it's already in there. Find next. Replace, 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 replace. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to be to make it interesting. I'm going to begin service at 80. So it's a little bit of a problem uh, in the beginning. Product's okay, service is not quite okay. Um, okay, like I said on the board, I'm going to change this to indicated percent of management time on service. So this is what the formula would tell you that in this situation you should spend 20% of time on service, uh, and then I'm going to add actual percent of management time on service. And this will be basically the minimum of that and 100% minus percent of time on product. Okay? So basically if, you know, it might be indicated you should spend 80% of your time on service, but if, you know, you, there's only 20% left of you, 
um, you take the 100% minus the pro what you're spending on the product and that's all you have left. So essentially that's what that formula means. So that's your actual time on service. This will be, uh, now I gotta link it to the actual one, instead of the indicated one. And that should be it, believe it or not. Let's take a look. Okay, so we have a model. So now we're gonna look at ending product results and um, ending service results. Insert line. There we go. That is what whack a mole looks like, basically. So if we just kind of step through this, um, product started at 100, service started at 80. They both they're both declining uh, because if you recall, it's not till 70 that you wake up and try and do something about it. Service hits 70, so you start to focus on service, and that improves. Um, which is fine, except product keeps declining because you're totally ignoring that until it hits 70. So now uh, you try and improve the product, and then service declines. As soon as the product starts improving, service is declining because you're spending all of your time basically trying to improve the product. So service declines. So you can see that basically you're in a game of whack and mole. You're either focusing on service or you quit that and you're focusing on product or you stop that and you're focusing on service again. So essentially, just like that arcade game where you're going from one problem to another problem to another problem to another problem. Okay, so that's the, um, that's basically the model of whack-a-mole and that's how you do it in, uh, in Excel. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll go to the board, we can talk about solutions to this problem, like how do you get out of the trap of playing whack-a-mole as a leader, and we can look at some of those solutions in Excel to see what they look uh, look and feel like. Okay, so I'll see you at the board. Okay, so how do you as a leader prevent getting into the whack-a-mole situation? So there's really two things I would say on that. The first is uh, most people don't um, consciously ignore erosion. So in this case, if you recall, the goals went from 100 to 90 to 80 to 70 before you know, the manager in this case figured out that he or she needed to act and then jumped all over it. Um, most people don't really consciously do that because they don't have good metrics and they don't have a balanced scorecard of metrics to notice erosion at the earliest possible moment. So they might say, oh yeah, we lost, you know, in terms of product competitive competitiveness, they might say, oh yeah, we lost a few more deals this quarter than last quarter, but you know, the product's still good and we won such and such deal. But if they had better metrics on win-loss and product competitiveness, they could see earlier on in the cycle that they were eroding in competitiveness. Or on service, you know, unless you, unless you have good customer satisfaction metrics, it might be a lot of anecdotal stories about about customers, whether they're getting more unhappy or not. So it might have to drop down to 70 for you to notice and jump on it. So the solution there is good metrics, leading indicators across your operation, financial, product, customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, um, development, people metrics like that, internal process metrics. So uh, the balanced scorecard, I think, is the best uh, you know, the best sort of line of, of thinking in this, uh, in this regard. So if you want to grab that book, and I'm sure there's a lot of books on it, uh, on it now, it's been widely, widely adopted. So that's the first thing. So you notice erosion as a leader uh, right away and can act before it becomes a problem, or a big problem, I should say. Uh, the second, uh, second problem is, is this one. So what happened is you basically, if you recall, here's your performance. Uh, here's meeting your goals at 100%, uh, dropping down to zero. And then here's the time you spend on that operation. So if you're meeting your goals, you're only spending 20% on the operation until it erodes to 70 where you like swoop in and spend 80% of your time in that operation until it gets cleaned up. Um, so, so this is a problem. The problem is you're spending so little time on a working operation that it erodes. And then you're just jumping on it, and basically when it says you're spending 80% of your time here, 
you're depriving the rest of your operations of your time. So in our fictitious example, we have two operations, product and, and service. We have 100% of our time to divvy up. So a strategy might be, okay, if things are going well, I spend 40% of my time on each operation no matter what. So 40-40. And then I have a 20% of my time remaining where I can, you know, jump in and improve or fix problems. So I never go down to 20. 40% uh, is kind of the bare minimum. And then as things erode, I sort of jump on it right away. Not, not dramatically, like the 80%, but I increase my time uh, on it. So, you know, another, another way to do this as a, as a manager is, again, even if you're meeting your goals, spend 40% of your time on something. Okay? Um, and, then, uh, and then don't do this. If it starts to erode, spend more time on it right away. So you might have, you know, a line more like this. Or if you never want to spend 100% of your time in one area, maybe a line more like you know, more like this, where, you know, you, you have a minimum that you spend here, and then as things erode, you spend more time right away. You don't, uh, don't ignore it. So those are the two things. Have some metrics balanced across your business where you can identify problems right away. And don't be, like, overreactive. Uh, spend a good amount of time with each operation so it's stable. And when you do need to improve it, as soon as it erodes, start spending a little bit more time there so you can solve the problem when it's easier to solve. So let's go back to Excel. I'll show you what that looks like. We'll just adjust the model with this kind of new curve. And, um, uh, and, then, uh, and then it'll be it. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, now we're going to uh, play with this and uh, play, uh, incorporate the strategies that we talked about on the board to see if it solves this whack-a-mole effect. So first I'm going to copy this chart. Copy and then paste it. Select somewhere and then paste it as a picture so it doesn't change. So that's kind of the before. And then this will be the after. Okay, so what we're gonna do basically is we're gonna adjust this table like I talked about. And we'll adjust it so that we basically don't spend any less time than 40 on a problem. And then as soon as the problem gets worse, as soon as it drops below 100%, we start spending more time on it and then let's do like a max of 60 so we can make sure we spend 40% of our time on the other thing, uh, on, the, on our other operation. So again, um, even if we're meeting our goals, we're going to spend 40% on things. Uh, and, then, and then basically, as soon as it drops below 100, let's spend 45, then let's spend 50. Then let's spend 55, then let's spend 60, and then let's stop at 60 so that we don't ignore the rest of our operation. Okay, so that's a better, more stable reaction when performance drops below the goals, that you don't overinvest, so you ignore everything else, and you don't underinvest, so it erodes. So let's take a look if we've solved the problem. So that's kind of the before. Let's scroll down. All right, and here is the after. And you could s ignore the extra lines there. Um, you can see in the after, the product results which started at 100. First of all, whack-a-mole is resolved. Actually, maybe this is a better one. Nope. Um, so whack-a-mole is resolved. We're not uh, jerking back and forth. Uh, product started at 100, so it's stable. It stays at 100. Service, which started at 80, you can see we spent enough time to improve it and get it to be 100 as well and you can ignore the little fluctuations. It's basically staying at 100. So let's, let's just do one more scenario. Let's say they're both problems. Let's say product was starts at 80 and service starts at 70. Okay, so we have two problems to solve. How will this strategy solve both problems? You can see it's a much more stable approach. So we're investing uh, enough time to improve both problems from their starting points. Um, we're getting product to, us, to its goals first, and then service meets its goals, and then basically we stay at 100 for both. So obviously this is a much more stable approach to fixing problems, to maintaining stable operations, 
and we still did it with 100% of our time. So what the leader didn't know when he or she was playing whack-a-mole is that, you know, he or she had enough time to really fix both problems and to run a stable operation. But the way um, she was reacting by jumping, by dramatic jumps from one place to another and ignoring, ignoring an operation was causing a problem. When there was enough time, there was enough money to run a stable operation if she changed the way or he changed the way uh, they thought about their time allocation. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the whack-a-mole uh, whack series. It's a very common problem, and I hope modeling it in system dynamics and thinking about it uh, this way helps you conceptualize the right way to lead and to approach problems. Okay? Thanks.